Now, a group of residents who live on a new housing estate in Worley say small print that wasn't clearly pointed out to them when they bought their new homes means they may not be able to sell them in the future. The houses were sold as leasehold as opposed to freehold. That means ground rent is payable every year. It applies to around half of all new homes built. But a clause in the sales agreement in the Worley residence signed means that the initial small annual ground rent doubles every 10 years. Well, our reporter Nishma Hindosha has been to Worley to hear from some of the residents there. Good morning, Graham. I'm outside the home of Andrew Henderson in Calderstone's Green in Worley, which he bought around about five years ago. It's a gorgeous location and all these houses are quite new and it could somewhat be a dream home for anyone. But Andrew, along with his neighbours, Dan Hamer and Mark Dunford, say it's turned into a bit of a nightmare. Andrew, good morning to you. Morning. Um, explain the problem here. So the problem is, yeah, we bought the house five years ago and uh, we've got one of these leaseholds on the property that we weren't aware of at the time of purchase. Uh, my neighbour Mark informed me of the, the problem about six months ago and basically it seems that in the lease um, it says that the ground rent doubles every 10 years, which means in 40 years it'll be £10,000 a year. Uh, not only that, it appears as well if you want to put an extension on your house to get authorisation for that, it's going to cost you about £10,000. Uh, and the bigger issue that we've had uh, recently is that we found out that the banks aren't lending potential buyers money to buy a house with a leasehold such as the one that's on our property here. Dan, how have you tried to resolve this problem? Well, at the moment, we're just kind of putting the feelers out there, trying to find as many people as possible that are in the same position as us. I mean, it's, it's fairly early days still, I think, in trying to first understand exactly what our rights are on this how we if and what we can do anything about it you know we're not entirely sure i think we've heard rumors well as far as i'm aware taylor wimpy are releasing a statement i think at the end of this month uh relating to people that are affected by these leaseholds but at the moment i'm not entirely sure what direction we can take it in mark how do you feel about all this well obviously i Obviously, we're absolutely devastated with the news of uh, this potential impact on our properties. Uh, Kim, as Andrew and Dan have already pointed the key issues out, but for me, is the impact on saleability. Uh, there's already talk about properties' bit values being hit by about £40,000. As Andrew says, there's also the possibility that people can't get mortgages to buy, so uh, we're almost in an unsaleable position. Andrew, when did you first realise the significance of this? Because it's quite a large amount, isn't it? Yeah, well, it was six months ago, like I said, when Mark pointed it out. We had no idea uh, prior to that. We were just paying £295 a year and we thought that was it. Uh, but I think the weekend's uh, article in one of the uh, uh, main papers pointing out that the banks are scrutinising the leaseholds and freeholds on properties they're lending against and they're not lending against properties with onerous leases like the one that we've got here, which I find alarming. Mm. It means, like Mark said, we're in an unsaleable position. Dan, what do you want to see done? Do you reckon the government should step in? I think something definitely needs to be done. I mean, from my point of view, I think, you know, we've been led up the garden path from the start of this, you know, advised to use... Uh, the solicitors for, that worked on behalf of the building company, you know, at, at, at a favourable rate, not disclosed the ins and outs of the lease at that time. So, to be honest, you know, we all feel like we're now in a position where there's a bit of a stranglehold over us on these properties, um, and it makes it difficult to, to see a kind of way forward with it. Mark, Woolley is a gorgeous part of, of, of Lancashire. If you would have known about this, would you have bought the property? We would have definitely uh, thought about it. Uh, what we would have bought at the time is that we could have uh, bought the freehold. Uh, a lot of the neighbours were advised that we couldn't buy the freehold for uh, for at least two years, and within that two, and that was okay. And then two years time, we bought the freehold for a few thousand pound. But unfortunately, the Taylor Wimpy then sold the freehold onto a third party investor, who are now holding us to ransom in everything we want to do, i.e., either buying the lease or making alterations to our property, and they're charging exorbitant rates to mm. do that. Well, that's the problem in Worley, or well, a part of it anyway. And it's affecting more and more people, this. Increasing ground rents is not uncommon. And now almost half of newly built properties in the UK are now sold as leasehold. But how can the developers justify ever increasing ground rents? I suppose they can hear what they want. Uh, we asked Taylor Wimpy, who built the houses in Worley, to speak to us today. They refused and issued a statement instead. 
In it, they say that they've recently decided that all future sales of Taylor Wimpy houses on new developments commencing from the 1st of January 2017 will be freehold. We understand our customers' concerns and are underway with a comprehensive review of doubling ground rents. They say that the vast majority of their homes are now sold on a freehold basis. Well, Henry Pryor is an independent housing expert and joins us this morning. I imagine, Henry, it's a case of when you buy a property, look at all the small print. Well, Graham, I'm afraid it probably is. Um, We used to operate a policy in this country based on the old Anglo-Saxon law and the Latin caveat emptor, uh, which means buyer beware. And both parties, for all of us who've been involved in buying or selling a property, will be aware that you get your own solicitor or conveyancer to look at the paperwork uh, and that it's a contract freely entered into. You get a lot of time, possibly arguably too much time, as we know that uh, a lot of sales fall apart between agreeing and actually exchanging contracts. But you get an awful lot of time, in fact, as much time as you want to be able to look at the paperwork. And if you're satisfied with what you've been presented with, then you proceed. Now, clearly, there are an awful lot of people, the sad stories we've just been hearing of particular individuals who've been caught out having signed paperwork that they now regret having signed. But the developers, uh, and the statement you've read from Taylor Wimpy and from other house builders, perhaps tells us as much as we need to about Mm. where morally uh, they feel they now are. Have they met their United Airlines or rat in the moment, perhaps? (laughs) But I think that we have to remember that... uh, Uh, When you're going out to buy a house, it is not like going out and buying a car or, indeed, a sandwich for lunch. (laughs) This is something uh, that most people require money in order to be able to do, to borrow money from a bank or a bill society. It's called a mortgage, Graham. Mm. It comes from the French more, which is for death. That's how seriously people should take this. It is not something that you embark upon lightly. The individuals, the listeners that we've just been hearing to hearing from, uh, that have experienced uh, the, the the really rough end of of the deal, uh, should, in my opinion, be going back and talking to their conveyances. It's worth bearing in mind that whilst leasehold properties, and perhaps the easiest way of explaining this is to um, imagine a block of flats. Mm. Clearly, you can't all in, you can't all own the freehold of your flat on the third or fourth floor. So uh, the, 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 uh, the, the freehold is divided up effectively amongst the leaseholders. But you're renting property, mm. as tenant farmers perhaps do. But uh, this clause uh, that is specifically painful in this, individual, uh, in this particular case of the doubling of the ground rent, which is the, the money you pay, used to be a peppercorn, literally a peppercorn, when pepper was a spice that was very, very valuable. That increases or doubles every... 10 years. We we dealt with this on the Victoria Derbyshire programme on the news channel just two weeks ago, and there's actually a very helpful and clear illustration of what specifically this means. But for some people it does mean, or will mean, that in 25 years' time, at the end of their mortgage, they could conceivably be paying millions of pounds every year towards the ground rent, and not surprisingly, mortgage lenders are now saying, hang on a minute, I'm not sure that we'd want to lend money on a property at half a million quid where the owner is going to be expected to be paying over a million pounds every year in, in, in ground rent. So that's the issue. That's the challenge. I don't think the, nas- the house builders have necessarily been going out there specifically uh, to con people in and, and stitch people up. Uh, they gave, they, they offered a contract which house buyers freely entered into. Mm. If they weren't correctly advised, they need to talk to the people that advise them. OK, Henry, uh, great to speak to you. Uh, Henry Pryor, an independent housing expert. When you buy a house... There's so much going on, isn't there? That this took it's it's expensive. You've got surveys, you've got this, you've got that, and the other. And and you you, you and if you're buying a new house, even getting a mortgage now is, you know, a tough job. Do you look at all the small print? Sebastian O'Kelly is a trustee of the Leasehold Knowledge Partnership, which is a charity which was set up to try to raise awareness of the issue affecting leasehold house sales. Sebastian, good morning. Morning. Do you think a lot of people actually probably are waking up this morning in their house that, that they own or, or you know, they're, they're, they're paying a mortgage for and actually don't realise that they're in or their house is on a, a 
uh, a, on leasehold land? Well, I think there are uh, considerably fewer of them than would have been the case a few months ago, thanks to the efforts of programmes like this, which are bro- drawing attention to this issue. Could I just address one thing that Henry Pryor okay. said well, about the timing, you know, and caveat emptor? Well, it's all true that, you know, you've got to, um, you, you've got to scrutinise these contracts very closely. But developers have made buying a house as sort of seamless and as easy as a kind of impulse buy at the end of a cu- supermarket queue. You can go into the sales office, sign some documents and get the developer recommended mortgage advisor, the developer recommended solicitor and sign the deal. And then there'll be a very tight time constraint so that you haven't got all the time in the world unlike what Henry was saying uh, you actually have to complete within about four to six weeks it's very difficult at that point to start engaging in uh, your own independent solicitor to look at this most of the people who have been caught out by this problem have used developer recommended solicitors and I'm you absolutely should not use a developer solic- recommended solicitor under any circumstances. Okay, so so how are you as a leasehold knowledge partnership trying to help people like you know they have the problem in 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 Wally this morning? Well, it's uh, we've got to see what Taylor Wingby comes up with in the review. I think they're going to offer millions of pounds yeah. in compensation. This is wrong selling. The local the MP Justin Maddis has likened it to the PPI scandal. It most certainly is. We've had one debate in the House of Commons. We're secretary of the All Party parliamentary group and we're discussing this on april the 19th we have 68 mps and peers who are members of that group so the pressure is on the developers to just cut this out and to rectify past injustices i have to say it's not just taylor wimpy uh taylor wimpy introduced these for its own reputation quite suicidal doubling ground rents which has caused so much uh, uh, ill feeling across the country but there's loads of other developers who've introduced these uh, onerous ground rents there's a little outfit called Beck Homes in Clitheroe that's built eight um, properties there now it's £295 a year ground rent no reason for this at all ground rent is for no service whatsoever well, is... well obviously the Beck Homes aren't, aren't here today and no, they're okay. not here to defend this so Okay, sorry about that. Well, I mean, the the, the point is, you know, loads of other developers are building them and the ground rents are very high. Now, what is ground rent for? I haven't a clue. I don't think anybody does have. It's not for any service at all. It is simply creating an investment asset class at the expense of the home buyer. So basically, house builders are cheating their own customers by building in these income streams. And then they sell this income stream off to murky and anonymous investors, often based offshore, who then reap the income of you buying a tenancy instead of a proper freehold home. But, but there are people, people this, this morning going, if you are going to make a purchase such as a house, which is the, probably the biggest thing you're ever going to buy, you should read all the small print. Well, you should, but they've, the, the developer recommended solicitors have not alerted people to these problems. Uh, we've done a survey of about 600 of these purchases, and we're presenting this evidence to the all-party parliamentary group. And... In the vast majority of cases, they've used the recommended solicitors of, of, of the developer. Not, not one occasion have they said there are contract terms in, in this deal which will affect the future value of this, uh, of, of this asset. And if they did such a good job, why are other solicitors now who are acting for buyers of these properties when they've come up for resale saying to their clients, don't touch these properties with a barge pole? And another point is that lenders... The most important one, I mean, lenders are not now lending on properties which have these doubling ground rents or onerous ground rents. Nationwide and HSBC have pulled out of deals and we're getting more and more evidence of this. So you've now got a mini housing crisis caused by this greed. OK, Sebastian, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Sebastian O'Kelly. You did mention a company in Clitheroe who built some houses uh, back homes. Obviously, we have no information on that and we did, they do not know if it's uh, true or not. So if you are waking up in one of those houses this morning thinking, well, what's going on? Uh, best, best that you check. But like I said, we have no information on that and uh, we do not know if it's true. 17 minutes after 8, let's talk to the MP for West Lancashire now, Rosie Cooper, who's on the all-party parliamentary group on leasehold reform. Good morning. Good morning, Keith. We was just likened maybe to the PPI scandal there. Would, 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 would you go along with that? Oh, absolutely. This is the modern-day stand-and-deliver Dick Turpin. Um, people are being uh, encouraged to buy their own homes, as Sebastian has just said, encouraged to use the developer's solicitors, that chain is complete. And uh, the um, householder, the person desperately trying to buy their home, um, is, is being treated as a cash cow. 
absolute disgrace. I believe that some people are trying to sue their solicitors for not alerting them to the problem, but isn't isn't that where the answer lies, or, or, or should someone else take the blame? Uh, I think everybody should take the, a piece of the blame here, and we even go um, all the way to the civil service and the government quango, the leasehold advisory service, who, you know, what are they for? Um, when they didn't alert the government to this potential housing crisis, which is really serious and really now. Yeah, and do you think most people are aware that, you know, that their house is on a leasehold property? Well, um, I, I, the answer to that is there'll be a lot of people who don't. And the, as soon as um, companies like Gra- um, Home Ground get a hold of their lease, then they start charging, and I'm sure they'll be people who, who suddenly realise that they've got a leasehold property. And the more programmes such as this talk about it, they will encourage people to be aware when they're attempting to buy a property. If it's leasehold these days, my message as an MP is don't touch it. Leave these developers with these properties on their hands. They'll soon get the message and stop selling leasehold properties but once we've done that, we still, of course, got the legacy issue. All those people who are stuck, um, mm. you know, with these murky, um, hidden away, uh, often offshore-based companies who are just getting an income stream um, at an ordinary householder's expense. It's absolutely, it really is a disgrace, 21st century disgrace. Rosie Cooper, the uh, Labour MP for West Lancashire, thanks for joining us this morning. Loads of calls and, and texts about it. A lot of people bought their home and think, oh, it's mine. I'm the king of my own castle. And they're thinking, yeah, it is yours, but the land it's on is, uh, is not yours. And you have to pay an awful lot of money.